Obviously, it's a big day for Illinois volleyball. It's a big day for University of Illinois athletics. Uh, volleyball has played such an incredible part of our athletic tradition here, and uh, we were very excited to, to start the new chapter uh, of this wonderful program. It's great to see so many people in the room today. A lot of our team is here. Appreciate uh, their support and patience over these last few weeks. You know, it's, it's always hard uh, when a coach uh, leaves to take another position. It's not something that when you sign up uh, as a student athlete that you anticipate. Uh, but they have taken that in stride and they understand uh, what we're trying to create here. I think it's brought them closer together over these last two weeks and uh, they've been wonderful with me and, and I'm very grateful to them for the leadership and the patience that they've shown. Uh, I hope they feel as excited as we are uh, about where we've landed and the direction that this program is prepared to go. Also, really excited to see Don Harden in the room. Uh, Don, of course, has been uh, just a, a wonderful uh, member of our volleyball community for a very long time. He was the coach when I was here as a student uh, all those years ago, and he and I struck up a friendship. And so it's uh, great to see him here with us today and excited for him to get to know uh, Coach Thomas as well. Uh, you know, it's funny, as the athletic director, I, I think that there are, there are very few responsibilities I have, if any, that are more important than hiring head coaches. That is, uh, of, the, of the many different things that, that kind of fall under my umbrella, inviting people into our family in that very critical role is the most important thing that I, that I do. For a very simple reason, that's because they're the ones who have the most direct involvement in our student athletes' day-to-day -day experience. They're the people who are the ones who are the teachers, if you will, in life that, that, we, start, that we talk so much about. And so when we have a vacancy in a head coaching position, that's an opportunity for us to take a step forward with our athletic program as a culture, as an expectation of excellence in every facet of our student athlete experience. And uh, so as we started off looking at this opportunity, the things we were looking for, certainly we wanted to find somebody with uh, an unbelievable background in the sport of volleyball. We wanted to find someone who had unmatched competitiveness, work ethic. Uh, an important part for me and I know for our team was finding someone who had a strong commitment to student athlete development, student growth, understanding that uh, volleyball is, is the, the classroom, if you will, uh, but the things that happen off that court are so much more important in terms of their growth and development, who's willing to uh, serve as a mentor for them. And then I think someone who wants to be a builder, someone who sees the potential that Illinois volleyball has to be one of the most competitive programs in not just the Big Ten, but the entire country. Uh, someone who shares that vision, wants to be a part of that process of taking us from where we've been, which is already one of the, the very strong programs in our conference and, and nationally, but taking that next step forward uh, and really competing for Big Ten and, and national championships on a year after year basis. And I'm really pleased that we were able to find that in Chris Thomas. We had unbelievable interest in the position, as you would expect, the most competitive conference in America in volleyball, uh, a great opportunity here in Champaign-Urbana. Talked to a lot of different people. A lot of different backgrounds, a lot of sitting head coaches, men, women, all different uh, backgrounds and origins. And, and it's been fun for me these last few weeks to learn a lot more about our, our volleyball community nationwide and to, to really grasp the opportunity that we have here in Champaign. And uh, through that process, we, we identified Chris, uh, his, his wonderful wife, Jen, and their kids. And, and it has just been uh, a great opportunity for us to get to know each other. Uh, and couldn't be more excited to, to welcome him to our family. A couple things about Chris Thomas. I talked about the things we were looking for. His volleyball pedigree is, is really incredible. He was a player himself, grew up in California, was an All-American, University of the Pacific. Uh, after that, he's played internationally uh, as a professional for six years. He's a member of our U.S. national team, was a team captain. I think it speaks to his, his leadership, his acumen with, uh, with the game. He transitioned to coaching about nine years ago, spent a lot of time under the tutelage of some, some uh, luminary figures in the game of volleyball. Certainly Hugh McCutcheon, who's now up at Minnesota, John Cook down at Nebraska, uh, Ron Larson, who was his coach uh, out at uh, UC Riverside. So a number of, of great coaches in the history of our game have, have uh, worked with, with Chris here over the last 10 years or so, and then even farther dating back to his days as a player. So we're excited. Uh, to, to have someone with his, his unique experience in, in the sport of volleyball. Uh, in the last two years in Nebraska, they won the national championship his first year there in the Final Four. This past season, they had great success when he was up at the University of Minnesota. 
So he's also familiar with the Big Ten Conference, uh, which was uh, very appealing to us. Uh, talk about competitiveness and work ethic. I think it, it speaks to, to who Chris is. I, I contacted him the first time by email. I said, hey, Chris, uh, just something to let you know if you're interested in talking with us. We'd love to find a time to visit with you about our opportunity in Illinois. And he wrote me back and said, well, he said, just so you know, I, I just had a, a, a daughter about a month ago. Uh, so, and this was, I think he sent me the email at like 12.05 a.m. He said, I'll be up until about 2, and then I'm going to sleep for a while, and I'll be up again after 7. Uh, so anytime other than like the 2 to 7 window, you're welcome to, welcome to call me. And I thought, well, that, uh, that seems about right. So I, I was pretty excited uh, that, you know, in his own description, he, he's a grinder, and that's uh, something I've always prided uh, myself in, in being, and, and I take uh, a lot of interest in people who, who identify in that way. Talk about the care and the concern for our student athletes. Uh, it, it's been fun for me to get to know him more and talk to him about his philosophy and the way he approaches uh, getting to know the student athletes under his charge. Uh, and then to talk to all the coaches who he has worked with over these last years to hear the way they describe the relationships that he forms with his players. And then to see him interact with our team last night when we had a chance to to bring them together for the first time, uh, it really made me feel good that, that we found the right person, someone who's going to connect with them in a meaningful way and, and be that mentor for them during their time on our campus. Uh, so all those things together make Chris just an unbelievable fit uh, for our community here in Champaign. And then take into consideration as well uh, his wife, Jen, who has been a, a volunteer assistant coach at both Nebraska and Cal Poly, which was one of Chris's stops. Uh, as wonderful as, as Chris's background as a player in volleyball has been, uh, Jen is, is equally impressive. She was a four-time All-American at Pacific. She was on the U.S. national team for eight years. She was a member of the silver medal team at the 2008 Olympics, uh, captain of the U.S. national team for four years, played professionally for over a decade. Uh, so she has a lot of uh, experience in the game as well, and we're excited for her to have a chance to interact and, and work with our student athletes also. And so it's really kind of a two-for-one family opportunity and as we talked to to Chris and to Jen got to know them uh, they have two young kids one is Jimmy uh, two two years old and then uh, Josephine who's not even one month old and uh, you see Chris he's he's six six Jen's about six three so we really did this for recruiting purposes we're making a we're making a long-term play here that those two kids are going to turn into something special uh, I don't think that's against NCAA rules but we may have to we may have to look into it but uh, anyway, if you would, uh, please join me in welcoming our new head coach, Chris Thomas. Wow, it's finally here. Um, I've been here actually for the last few days, and uh, Josh mentioned the, the uh, if as long as you don't call me between two and seven, that's good, but it's turned into three to six. So a few less hours of sleep over the last few nights, but uh, very well worth it. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Josh. Um, all my interviewers asked me when I was here, you know, why Illinois? Uh, why do I want to coach here? And uh, I, I gave them my answer. And after I gave them my answer, I asked them the same question back to them, you know, what I wanted to see why they were here as well. And uh, across the board, it was, it was all the same answer. The response was the academics, of course, the community, and Josh and his vision for the future and his commitment to that. So thank you for making me a part of this future. Um, so why Illinois for me? Well, first, I think you've got to look at your current team. And, uh, you know, having scouted against them on the other side of the net, uh, I know how, talent, how much talent this team really does have. And uh, I look forward to working with them and getting in the gym as soon as possible. And uh, I met with them last night and was at weights with them a little bit this morning and uh, you know just an incredible young team and and uh, you know they're they're fired up to get going and start working too and that's really what you want as a coach so you know that was really cool to me um, secondly you know I mentioned all the interviews that I had I probably met I don't know somewhere between 15 and 16 people somewhere around there and uh, you know, after talking with a lot of people, you, you start to understand the passion that everyone has for being here. And that was very important to me as well. And, uh, you know, an organization is only as good as their people. And uh, we got a lot of good people here. So I really appreciated that. Um, thirdly, you have the fans and the, and the Huff environment. Uh, you know, you have the Spike Squad, which was literally me 20 years ago. I mean, that was me in the stands 20 years ago. And to see that passion from the students, that is really, really uh, cool to see. 
And, uh, you know, I, I just enjoy their enthusiasm and the antics that go on. And, of course, it makes it very difficult on our opponents, which I really like. Um, you also have the networkers, who I know was started here a long time ago. Um, I know there's a lot of passion there. And, uh, you know, the, the students part is great, but it's great to have help from the community and to make the gym loud and to have uh, people that, that also understand the passion for this game and have a love for the game. It's really important, and it's uh, very nice to see for growth of the sport as well. Um, it, you know, I spoke about Huff just a little bit. Um, it's known as one of the toughest places to play in the Big Ten. Um, I know we always fear going there with, with whatever school I've been at before, whether it be Nebraska or Minnesota. It's a very tough environment, and we intend to keep it that way. Um, but I also, you know, appreciate, you know, in conversations with this job, uh, you know, Josh's commitment to, to facility improvement down the road to enhance the player and the, and the uh, fan experience. So uh, that's, that was really something uh, that was, that was uh, you know, for the sport is good to see, and, and I appreciate Josh's commitment to that. Um, lastly, you know, I love the challenge of the Big Ten. And uh, being, you know, I've had some pretty good success as an assistant. And uh, I've been in it for four of my coaching years, and it's really prepared me for this job. And, uh, you know, just to be, uh, uh, you know, wanted as a coach to be in this conference is really, you know, to me, I mean, I, I can't think of any words to describe it. I mean, I, I really look forward to the challenge of getting in there and battling some people that I worked with and worked for for a long time. So um, I think that's just really great. I need to give a bunch of thank yous, of course. Um, I've had a unique path in my playing career. And I owe a lot of thanks, man. <laughs> I owe a lot of thanks to a lot of people. I'm not going to get through this. <laughs> I'll try to go as quickly as possible. All the coaches that I had and the coworkers throughout the years taught me everything that I know now and I can bring to the team. I got into this sport because of them and the passion they had for me. And I want to give that passion to my players when I coach them. I'd like to thank all my former players. I'm still close with a lot of them and keep in contact with a lot of them. And I hope to have impacted their lives as much as they've impacted mine, as you can see. <laughs> Of course, I'd like to thank my friends and my family, and both my wife, my wife and my parents still love the game as much as I do, as much as we do. And I told them last night, I told the team last night that they're about to get, uh, they just gained four new volleyball fanatics, so appreciate that. Um, and I can't thank them enough for all the love and support throughout our lives. Uh, you know, we moved around a bit, and they've really been there every step of the way, and even before the coaching career started. Uh, you know, obviously getting us to the point where we're able to do this today. <laughs> Lastly, I need to thank my wife, Jen. I wouldn't be here without her support. Ultimately, her passion for the sport as well. Being a coach's wife, this is part of my gonna get <laughs> Being a coach's wife is not easy. All the coaches back there know how hard we work. <laughs> and it took me a lot of hours to get here. And that she truly completes me. And we look forward to our time in the community with our family, the team, the school, and the community. Thank you. Go Illini. decision to come to the University of Illinois for one and for two. Talk about the potential, if you will, uh, that you see on the current roster. Sure. Um, rega regain myself here. Um, I think, you know, speaking to the first part where 
having scouted on the other side against them, um, you know, and, and, and knowing their talent and knowing what they have and what's here was important to me. Um, I've been to programs where we've had to rebuild from the ground up, and this is definitely not a rebuilding uh, team. This is something that's in place, and it's just, hey, let's just keep the wheels going and, and hopefully you know, push the pedal a little bit faster. And that was really exciting for me to take a group of players and, and, and have that challenge for me, knowing that there's also you know, lots of room for growth and that, and that uh, you know, the challenge, again, the challenge of the Big Ten. So it was, it was a big part of my decision as well. Scott Ritchie with the Champion News Gazette. Uh, it was for your first head coaching job to be in the Big Ten. I mean, what kind of challenge will that be? And what maybe do you have to, to do as a coach to, to accomplish something like that? Sure. Uh, you know, I, I think that I've had a lot of, uh, like I said in my speech, I had a lot of unique experiences. And I've played for a lot of coaches that were very good at very different things. And when you start to work for those coaches, you start to pick up on uh, pretty much a little bit of everything and you know I've learned uh, analytics from a lot of my coaches and I've learned uh, you know how to communicate with the team um, I've been able to play for some great coaches as well so you just try to use all those examples and experiences and and you know as the years gone on I have notes and I and uh, you know I, I have uh, stuff that I had wanted to do as a head coach so I just kind of hope to put that all in in, in play and and kind of run with it I'm with the uh, Daily Illini. Uh, Coach Hamley had a very strong relationship with the players. Um, Josh mentioned uh, that uh, when he introduced you. Can you just uh, tell us a little more about the relationship you plan to have with your players as coach? Sure. Well, you saw me blubbering at the end there, so a lot of that was for my players. So that's kind of what I plan for these players, too. And, uh, you know, we spent, a, we spent a lot of time, and we will continue to do so. And, you know, that there'll be. We have kids, as, as Josh mentioned, and they'll be help raising our kids. And we have dogs. They'll be help taking care of our dogs, I'm sure, voluntarily, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, so that's, I mean, that's the part of coaching. And that's what I, one of the things I really love about it. Coach, um, current staff, have you met with them? Uh, what are your plans uh, in uh, your staff? Sure, I think, uh, you know, as far as current staff goes, it, we, yes, I have spoken with them. There hasn't been a lot of time to do that. I, I pretty much, I, I got here on Wednesday, um, interviewed for almost 48 hours straight and, and came back and had to get all, a lot of things in order. So I've had some conversations with them and, and when a new head coach comes in, there's usually some, some turnover. Um, but, you know, kind of what I'm looking for is just a staff that I can trust and, and one that communicates really well. Some of the, the best staffs that I've been on, you just have this unbelievable bond and, and it really helps for the girls to see that as well. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. So uh, I, I'll go through a vetting process as, as they did with, with me and I'll go from there. Is your wife going to be uh, continue to be a volunteer? As, as far as I'm concerned, yes. Maybe when you were you know, game planning against would be one thing that stuck out to you the most uh, about the team and what uh, what's maybe one area you think you can maybe bring something different sure you? sure you know I, I think every team has uh, every team's going to have strengths and weaknesses you know regardless of, of who you are there's no you know unbelievable unreal team out there and uh, you know ourselves included when we won the national championship but you know the the plan is the the strength is always within the talent, within the people. And, and you know, I've, just having met them last night and, and having been around them a little bit this morning, I think that's going to be a real strength of ours. And obviously, we, we look to enhance that. Um, playing wise, you know, they've always been a good blocking team, uh, a good setting team. Uh, and, you know, we kind of we just look to, to improve on a few of those areas. But all of the pieces are there. We just got to improve a little bit more, I believe. Going off that uh, blocking and setting thing, you got Allie Bell, Nancy Nelly, one of the top, the, the top uh, blockers this past year in the NCAA, and then you have Jordan Poulter. We can just talk about what Nancy Nelly brings defensively and Poulter brings like, as offensively. You were a setter, she's a setter. Sure, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll speak for Allie first. 
And, uh, you know, I, I got to coach the middles in Nebraska for the last few years. And, uh, you know, really good, really good, really good middles can read the game really well. And Allie does a very nice job of that. So not just for um, stuff blocks, but getting touches to slow it down for defense to play balls. And, and you know, she was one of the top blockers because she was a really good uh, reader of the game and she's able to see the game really well. So that's that's what excites me about her game uh, in terms of Jordan, um, you know, kind of Jordan really excites me because I was a former setter. Um, all American at Pacific and, and with the national team. And, um, you know, she's big, she's physical, and kind of the same attributes I had when I played. And, and I hope to kind of teach her a few things that I learned along the way that, that helped me, you know, beyond just the collegiate career, but into the international career as well. Uh, we did a conference call with them last night. So my plan is to try to get out and see them as soon as I can. So. Be hitting the road here pretty soon. What was their response? Got a meeting their new coach over the phone. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had known some of them before on the recruiting trail. You know, at, we recruit a lot of the same kids in the Big Ten, so I had known some of them, and um, and then uh, we we gave them all my contact info, and I got texts from all of them say, "Hey, great, you know, nice to meet you," and uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it, everything was great. Yeah, I think so. Did you have a chance to confer with Coach Cook and get his advice about this job, or was this the process so fast that that's not something that uh, is feasible? No, I uh, I think loyalty loyalty is really big in this profession, and uh, you know I I got the email from Josh and uh, I I I. I texted John right away, and I said, John, do you have a second? That's all I, I texted. He goes, is it Illy? <laughs> That's all he wrote. And I said, did someone contact you about that? He's like, nope, I had a feeling they'd contact you. So, no, I, I, I had given him an agreement that I would be there for three years, so I was in year two, and uh, he was very gracious in, in saying, you know what, you're, you're ready. You know, you need, you need to go and uh, an interview, so. I mean a lot of course and uh, you know I told the team last night I said I can't promise you guys wins and and uh, championships you know but I can I can promise uh, you know if we work hard if we have a great attitude if we're really good teammates you know we'll have the best shot possible to do that and uh, you know the wins are a byproduct of all those things, and if we're able to pull that stuff together, um, then then great. But you know, their their experience to me is just as important. And you know, we're going to do our best to win. I hate losing, so um, you know, we're we're but bringing a championship obviously would be the ultimate goal. And uh, yeah, that's what that's what we're always shooting for. We'll have some time for one-on-ones and photo opportunities with Coach before then. Uh, do you have any questions for Josh Whitman? Josh, this might not be fair, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great, Dave. Let's do it. <laughs> well, we, we had chatted with Kevin when we learned that he was uh, leaving for Stanford, and uh, he was upfront that you and he talked quite a bit before his departure, and um, he mentioned that he had some names for you that that you should uh, possibly investigate. Uh, was Chris one of them? You're right. That's not a fair question. Um, but I, I will say, yeah, we, we talked to a lot of people within the volleyball world as we started on this search, and Kevin was certainly one of them. And, and so we talked with him about a number of different names, and he certainly is familiar with uh, Chris. He's known him for a long time. Uh, and so there, there is a connection there. Um, but he was just one of several resources who we uh, utilized throughout this process to try and identify and narrow uh, what ultimately could be a, a very large candidate pool. Contract details you can share, like uh, total compensation. Sure. Yeah. 
sure. It's, it's a five-year contract. starts at $300,000 a year. Uh, volleyball has been interesting in, in the Big Ten here in the last few years. It's really incredible the, the way the market has developed. And so now we're even at, uh, at that dollar figure, we're still fifth, sixth in the, in the Big Ten. Uh, the, the influx of resources from across the league has happened very quickly. And so uh, we, we knew we needed to take a step forward in order to remain competitive in that front. I'm, so, I'm not sure I follow. System pool as far as contracts goes? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, we've maintained what the current pool was and actually augmented it slightly. Very quickly, a couple of hires here. Is this the time frame you had hoped to get it in, or was this maybe faster than what you would expect? No, I, I hoped to move as quickly as we could. Certainly, that the, the most important thing you know, these head coaches are just such a critical piece of our Illinois athletics community. And so every time there's a, a void there, uh, it, it really is a, a major source of, of attention. And so I, I knew I wanted our team to have direction as quickly as possible. I knew, knew that I wanted our recruits to have direction as quickly as possible. And so I visited with them. You know, Kevin gave us his resignation, I guess, at what, that Monday. Uh, and so we, we met with the team on Monday, met with the team again on Tuesday. Uh, had a conference call with the recruits that evening. Uh, and at that time, we're hoping that we could wrap this up within two weeks. That, that's always been sort of our, our goal from the, from the outset for this particular search. Ah!